Well, good morning and happy new year. Uh, so we're starting off the new year and let's all pray it goes better than last year. And we get back to a little bit of something normal. Hopefully back to normal, but who knows. So we are downstairs this morning with a noisy one from Bindi. These are Bindi's schnoodle puppies. If you're seeing this on YouTube, please do not call me because these are sold. I have so many people on the waiting list. I don't think there's a doubt that the first four people are going to take all four of them. Uh, if they don't, I have people in the wings that are waiting if they don't take them. So these are basically not available. So uh, we're putting them on the website today for the first time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they are um, just coming a week old. I think Vanessa's, when is it a week old? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. And uh, it's been crazy busy and I haven't paid any attention to when the week ended up. <clears throat> so they're doing really good. Um, they are just great. They're nice and fat. She's doing a wonderful job with them. And we got a great selection of colors in this litter. So Bindi is a white poodle. She's Maggie's full sister. And Maggie has puppies on the sold page. And so the, both of them are sisters, but they were bred to different boys. Um, okay, you're finally gonna quiet down. Oh my golly. They were so noisy. So their tails are finished. That's all done. Um, dew claws have been removed. They only had dew claws on the front and uh, no back dew claws. So we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna give you microchips, uh, numbers. I'm gonna put some photos on the website. Now I did take the photos about three days ago, so they're gonna be a little bit different looking today than they will be on the pictures because they were younger. That makes sense. Um, eyes won't open till about 12 days old, and sometimes they'll pop open at 10, sometimes they'll go to 14 or 15. It's just a mother nature thing. So I don't know what you have on your coat, but it's like this little thing sticking to you. Um, so what we have is a cream. This one will turn salt and pepper. It is not black. I'll show you when we get into that puppy. I think this one is going to be a sable. It is not going to be this color. It's changing and this is a little apricot and she has a black nose. This one has a chocolate nose so in realistically she would be considered like a white chocolate or a cream but she's going to have a brown nose. So she's a derivative of a chocolate um, and they're all girls. All girls. We did lose one during delivery um, she was really nervous with us even thinking about trying to help her. So I watched her on a camera most of the night, let her do it all by herself and thought she did a great job. Woke up the next morning. I went to sleep about two and a half hours and went out to check her and she had laid on one. So there were five girls, but we did lose one during delivery. Oh, now you're going to squeak because I touched you. All right, so let's just get started with the noisy one and then we'll get them back to Bindi because I know she's wondering what I have done with her children. This is my noisy one today. Her microchip number is 5595. Maybe if I pick her up, she won't be noisy. No, that's not gonna make any difference. So she's got beautiful coloring and she's got no markings or coloring on her belly. I know you're noisy. She's got a dark nose, and I don't think it's going to be chocolate. There is, yeah, there is a possibility it is going to be chocolate. I can't tell. Oh, there she's quiet. I better not move. She's quit crying. <laughs> she said, I just want somebody to hold me. And no, we don't hold these. So this is the first time we've really, we picked them up and trimmed toenails and did their tails and dew claws, but we leave them alone with mom. Let mom be the mom. You're gonna hate me when I lay you on this scale. Okay, so let's see what she weighs. She's gonna cry. There we go, 10.6. So she's 10 ounces, 10.6 ounces. Okay, calm back down. There you go, okay. All right, you're gonna be done squeaking. I'm gonna lay it down carefully. Oh no, gonna squeal. All right, so hopefully she'll settle down in a minute. So this is the one. How about if I let you go under this puppy? Will that help? You need somebody to give you a weight? That won't help. Okay. 
This is the one that's going to be another color, not chocolate. So if you look underneath this coat, I can't tell if this is gonna stay sable or turn buff, but you can really see the changes coming. A lot of times these puppies with a dark mask, although this face is turning sable too, uh, you can really see that too, pretty easy. But the weird thing is, it has a phantom marking under the tail. I don't know if you can see that or not that way. Let's give you a butt shot. So that is a typical phantom marking, but I think it's gonna turn this color all over. So it'll be interesting. Schnoodles are like chameleons. I saw that some of the people on um, the Wendy Hill Puppy Parrots Facebook page wanted to know why in the world their dog turned a color after a year, maybe two years, maybe three years. Well, here's your explanation. There are so many color genetics behind Schnauzers anymore. There's actually 12 colors of Schnauzers. Most people only think there is salt and pepper, black and silver, or black. Wrong, there's lots of colors. There might even be more than 12. I know when you get Wheatons in there, that puts it up in the, in the 13 range. So when you breed a Schnauzer that has a lot of color genetics behind it to a Poodle that has a lot of color genetics behind it, there's no guarantee that a black's gonna stay black, a chocolate will stay chocolate. Um, what else is gonna change? Those are the biggest changes that I can think of are the blacks and the, and the chocolates. Chocolates a lot of times will turn to where they look like coffee with cream in it. They get kind of a milk or a, a hot chocolate look. In fact, somebody smells like we're gonna have an accident. Um, so that's the explanation of why they change. There are just so many color genetics behind both breeds and you can have a chameleon. You might get it as a black and then I actually have a black that I sold. Oh, it's been five or six years ago, and they sent me pictures. It's Snow White now, uh, which blew my mind. We've had a couple do that. So not very often, but we have had a couple go completely white by the time they're like three that started out jet black. So genetically wise, you know, we give you as close an estimate as we can give you of what we think they're gonna stay. And I think this one is always gonna stay cream. It may even get a little lighter because mom is a white poodle. Uh, and she's got a ton of color genetics behind her, as you can see from just this sampling. You know, there's party in the background, there's apricot in the background, there's cream, there is obviously a chocolate or a buff or a sable in the background. Looks really, really light there. So this is a chameleon and so is this one, and we'll get to that one in a second. But so hopefully somebody on the Puppy Parents page hears this video because they were quite seemed to be irritated that their puppy changed colors. So I try and tell everybody, you know, if I can tell you up front what we think it's gonna turn, we really try, but it is such a Houdini's cauldron of colors in that pot that, you know, we're not always correct either, but we try. I don't want anybody to be deceived and not know their dog's gonna turn colors, <clears throat> but sometimes we can't tell either when they're here until they get home and they're about a year old. 55.92 is the microchip number on this little girl. And she's really doing good. Um, she has no other color on her chest. She doesn't have any white except on these back toes. There's a teeny tiny bit of white. We've already trimmed their front toenails. I did those the other day when I did their tail. You're gonna see her get raccoon eyes pretty soon. You can see how light these eyes are getting if Vanessa zooms in. Also, if you're new to our channel and you've not seen us do this, these guys, when they're born, their eyes and their ears are sealed ab absolutely closed. So if I pull this ear out here and Vanessa zooms in super close, you're gonna see that, see that ear is sealed completely shut. It is sealed exactly like their eyes. So once those eyes start to open, so do the ears. They'll start to get flakes of skin all over them like they're shedding, and that little ear will start to open up. So. Nose-wise, I do not think there's any sealing in nose because I know when I deliver puppies, there's lots of times I can hang them upside down and give them a sling and the crap just comes out of their lungs. So until you get them cleaned out when they first are born, um, if you, unfortunately, if the cord breaks before the puppy's born, as soon as that cord breaks, they take a breath and they'll suck that in. 
And then you've got to really work on them to get it out. CPR does work. We've saved a lot of puppies with CPR, but yeah, it doesn't taste very good, but it, it gets it done. So that's the Dibby giving on her. Let's see. Oh, don't tell me goodbye. I haven't waited her yet. All right, let me just get hello. Come on. There we go. Okay, I'm sorry it's cold. 10.4. Holy buckets. They're just about the same. All right, so that does her. Let's do the salt and pepper. Okay, and I realize you're waiting her down. Can I sneak you off the top? She's going to be our crybaby. Here, you want to get on top of her and keep her warm? There you go. Lay right there and smash her down. All right. So this is another, let me get the chip number while it's on. 55.93 is the microchip on this puppy. So this is not a black and white. This is going to be a salt and pepper and white. And how we know that is if you look underneath here, changing also. Now this has the same color as that one does underneath here. Yeah, but I think this is going to be a salt and pepper. Only because I've never had a party that is this color that did not turn salt and pepper, but I've had these that don't turn salt and pepper that stay like a sable or a buff. So I'm guessing here, folks, but this one is absolutely changing colors. White will always stay white. That's not going to change at all. But the, the spots on this puppy are absolutely going to change. You can see the raccoon eyes coming. She's got a really pretty blaze right in the center of her forehead. And she has a little tiny white spot right here on the back of her head. And if I roll her over, the belly's probably all white. Yep, all white belly. Dew claws have been removed. And dew claws, if you don't know what they are, was the toenail that is right there where that scab is. Um, all dogs in the world are born. Wolves are born with it. Um, coyotes are born with it. All dogs that are inherently related are born with that front dew claw. Some dogs have back dew claws, which is the fifth toe up here on the back, and you always want to take that off because it gets caught on things. These guys didn't have one. But um, my explanation for a dew claw is dogs, when they are, um, before they were socialized and become acclimated for pets, and they still use it today. When a dog breeds, this toenail digs into the side of the female's coat to hold him on top. That's my only explanation. Uh, and that's actually what my vet told me. So they're a pain in the butt to groom your puppy with. So that's why we take them all off. And I'll turn them around here and show you the markings on the back of her. She's really, really a pretty puppy. And her, she's still got this little tiny bit of rubber band left on her tail. That'll fall off at about four weeks old. So... She's doing really good. Let's see what you weigh. And the white around her muzzle, this will stay white. She has a little snip of white right there, but you probably will never see it once the fur grows in on the face. Okay, we gotta turn it back on. This one says I'm trying to scoot in and get closer and closer and closer. All right. All right, I gotta move it. Vanessa says I gotta move it. 10.4, gee, many Christmas. They're all weighing the same. All right, this is the cream female. I only have 15 minutes to do this, and if I go over this, shut me off. She's going to have a brown nose, it looks like, from this point, as much as I can tell you. And I would say she's going to stay this color or get lighter and turn white. But as of right now, she's a cream because she's a chocolate derivative. She's going to have brown paws underneath. They're just turning, but I think this nose is going to stay chocolate. Uh, otherwise, it would have black on it right now. All right, 5594 is her microchip number. We're going to speed through you. 11.6, we got one that doesn't weigh the same as everybody else. Um, she's all the same color all the way over. She says, don't do that to me. But they're doing great and they've all turned around. <laughs> they've all turned around towards my arm so they can get under my arm. Um, so that's the skivvy on the litter. I'm going to put individual photos on. Once I put individual photos on, then the pics will start. So this is just to give you an idea of the litter. I promise I'll have pictures on today. I'll text you when the pictures are on. And if you uh, also join the Facebook page and subscribe to our face, or I'm sorry, our YouTube page, every time I post a video of them, it will email you that there's a new video on the website. So have a great day. If you have questions, call me. Otherwise, give me a call when it's your pick and I can answer anything you need. Talk to you later.